Check, one, two, three, four, five. Check, one, two. Hello, check, check, check. Hello. Check, one, two. Check, one, two. Hello, check, check. Check, one, two. Hello. All right, let me get this tune good. Okay, good, gotcha. Uh, hello. Coming at you live here at Avon for this uh, JV football matchup between Avon and Westfield here on a beautiful autumn Saturday morning here in the lovely community of Avon. The Orioles uh, beat the Shamrocks last night in varsity action 20 to 13 at Westfield. And so now. Level you're gonna broadcast at. Yep. Okay, good. All right, keep going. Okay. Okay, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So is is every coming coming through loud and clear then? So yeah, you're good. okay, that's good. Yeah, so you're good. So you can just uh, stay connected. You can start whenever you're ready. Or oh, okay, yeah, I'll start in a couple of minutes. Just like how you might call a play or whatever. Okay. okay so uh, Mason Miller in shotgun takes snap, rolls to his right, looks downfield, throws in the end zone, and it is incomplete. And uh, we got a flag on that play. Let's see, I think it is going to be pass interference there. But let's take a look. And now we've got uh, 6.30 on the... Okay, good. Okay, I will do that. All right. It looks like it's going to be a camping trip down there, but the, the worst thing, because Casc I do Cascade varsity most weeks, and the worst thing is they have a crossover game the last week where, you know, as you play a team from the other division of your conference, and right now the most likely opponent is Sullivan, which is about 100 miles away. So I'm, I'm hope it, it could eat, it could eat also be North Putnam or Greencastle. I'm hoping it's one of those two. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we'll, we'll see.
Okay. Hello and welcome to Hendricks Regional Health Stadium on the campus of Avon High School. My name is Lech Zorn and I'll be bringing you all the action as your Avon Orioles challenge the Westfield Shamrocks in junior varsity football action. Well, last night up at Westfield in the varsity matchup between these two schools, your third ranked Orioles had a tougher time than expected but still prevailed by a score of 20 to 13. And now we're about to get a look at the future of the programs in the JV game and Westfield will be starting by kicking off. It's a deep kick and it is fielded uh, about the 20 over to the 25, 30. Looks for a hole and he's brought up uh, at the 34. Jalen Love there on the return for Avon. And so now Avon goes first on offense. The uh, Orioles varsity team now with a record of six and one, won their first three, then lost to currently second ranked Brownsburg, then have won uh, three subsequent games since then. Most likely we'll have a showdown with um, Browns with Brownsburg in the sectional. So Avon starts off the game, three receivers to the left, one to the right. And quarterback and shotgun, one running back. Takes a snap, hands off, and he's got a, a hole. Uh, he's got the first down and more stays on his feet. Up to the 50, 45, over to the left side of the field, and he is brought down at about the 42. That was Jarrett Steven who had an 83-yard uh, touchdown rush um, in the varsity game in, in the final minutes against Fishers last week. 
He, uh, after Samson James, who's bound for Ohio State, graduates this year. Steven should be the running back next year, and they give him credit for 25 on that play. So excellent start to the game for Avon, as they usually have. And now gives it to Steven again. He's through the 40, up to, and uh, up to uh, past the 35. We got a rugby type scrum, and he almost gets another first down out of it. And he's just going to be just short of another first down. 9.03 to go. So the Orioles uh, now one minute into this game. And Jarrett Steven, two rushes for 34 yards. This is my third consecutive year commentating that young man. I commentated him two years ago on the freshman team last year, JV, and this year both JV and varsity. Certainly he would be starting for varsity in most teams in the state. Three receivers to the left, one to the right now. Hand off to Steven again, and he hesitates and then goes forward. It doesn't get much, but I think he did get the yard he needed for the first. Steven, who I don't think has much of a chance to make it. But he's one of those players who's still, because he plays in the shadow of Samson James, who, like I said, is bound for Ohio State. Um, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they stopped him at the line of scrimmage, so did not get the first after all. But if I were a betting man, I'd say they give it to Steven, you know, who will at, at least pick up the, the one yard. So now two receivers to each side, Steven the running back. Uh, Steven gets it, but they, they're they ready for him again. He plows forward. Um, he They might give him forward progress to give him the first down by the skin of his teeth, but it's going to be very close, and I don't think he got it. So uh, kudos to the... Uh, Westfield defense, whether whether he got the first down or not, and this looks like it's it might yeah, it looks like they might be doing a measurement. No, 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 they're not going to do a measurement. So two plays in a row, Steven stopped dead in his tracks after going uh, 34 yards combined on his first two rushes. So now uh, Avon lining up uh, once again, two receivers to each side. Um, Steven, the running back. Quarterback and shotgun. Now he uh, screen pass and he's got the first. He's got the first and that was to Remington Gall there, who picked up about three yards there. The first pass of the game. Remington Gall, a six-three, uh, 165 pound. Senior maybe needs to gain 10 or 20 pounds of muscle, but 6'3", uh, pretty optimal uh, wide receiver size. So now three receivers to the left, one to the right. Um, quarterback in shotgun, Steven, the running back. And now a fixed handoff, Steven, throws down the middle, and I, I think that's uh, Gall. No, it, he's uh, inside the 10, up to about the 5. That was to Carmelo Mitchell that time for a pickup of 24, bringing it down to uh, the 5. That was Carmelo Mitchell there for 24. So 6.37 to go. Three receivers now to the left, one to the right. Quarterback and shotgun, Steven, the running back. And now high snap, but he gets it over to Steven. He takes it over to the right side, looks for some room, dives. Did he get in? Yes, he got the touchdown. So Jarrett Steven opens the scoring with 621 here in the first quarter. And uh, Steven overall um, five carries, uh, 39 yards on that opening drive, capped off by the five-yard touchdown. So Sam Miller, um, the uh, surprisingly good female kicker for Avon now. Up to the attempt, the extra point, and it is up, and it is good. This is the first time I've commentated her this season. She was 17 for 17 on extra points in the three games in which I commentated her last season, and one for one on field goals, that coming from 29 yards. She's a converted soccer player. Um, doesn't have the most powerful leg I've ever seen, but she's one of the most accurate kickers I've ever seen, and certainly gives a lot of inspiration to any girls who aspire to success in football. You know, it's not done often, but... She proves it, it can be done, and and it, you know it's a, it is it is a great story, and you know um, Sam Miller listed at five one one twenty. I'm sure if anybody ever uh, is guilty of roughing the kicker on her, they will receive no mercy from 
the officials. And, you know, I don't know if she will ever be a varsity kicker, but I'll tell you, I would not rule it out um, because I have seen you know, this is I've commentated seven seasons and 76 varsity games, plus about 20 to 25 JV and freshman games. And now Sam going for the uh, extra. She's kicking off. And, wow, she's got darn good range. She gets it down to the 44. So, I mean, she, um, and now uh, Westfield returns it up to about the uh, 31 or so. That was um, Aiden Franzen there on the on the. Um, uh, on, on the return there. So now we'll get a first look at Westfield. The Shamrocks uh, really um, suddenly emerged as a Class 5A power in football in this decade, you know, after, you know, um, and certainly it helps uh, hold that thought. So now three receivers to the left, one to the right. Got a handoff there. Takes it over to the right, past the 35. Out of bounds around the 37 or 38. Six minutes to go now. Avon scored easily on their first possession. Westfield trying to stay level. That was Jack Pfeiffer, by the way, on, the, on that rush there. And now we got some movement before the line of the play is whistled dead. Offsides on Avon, so, you know, all of a sudden it goes uh, from second and six to 31. No, it does, it does move the chains, okay. So now three receivers to the left, one to the right. Screen pass, it is complete on the left side of the field. He's got a hole. He uh, dives. He might have had the first down. The ball came out, but he was clearly down first. So the pass completed there to... Um, pass completed there to Franzen. And now three receivers to the right, one to the left. Drops back to pass, throws over to the right side, and it is, oh, tipped and uh, nearly intercepted there. And by the way, um, Nick Talley is the starting quarterback. Hold on. And now uh, uh, handoff there, and uh, he, he's got the first. I believe that was Pfeiffer again, but we got a flag. Nick Talley is the quarterback for Westfield. He wears number 18. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, now that we're getting into quarterbacks who, you know, probably began playing football either after Peyton um, left the Colts or um, was at the tail end of his tenure with us. It'll be interesting to see how many quarterbacks, you know, we see wearing number 18 in Indiana high school ball in the next few years. I know it's just been in the last two or three years I've started to commentate a lot of kids, both boys and girls named Peyton. A penalty goes against Avon, so Westfield now in Avon territory at the 44. Handoff to Pfeiffer, but they're ready for him, and he only uh, gets maybe one. So they're going to mark him down for, it looks like, no gain there. So two receivers to the left, one to the right. Pfeiffer, the running back, Tally the, uh, in shotgun. Hand, now he picks the handoff, throws over to his right. He's got a man open. And now he, uh, he's knocked out of bounds. I think he did get the first. So that was uh, hold that thought. So now. Uh, th throw it at the other side, and this time he's got uh, Franzen again, uh, who's going to be up for about, uh, they're getting a credit for about an even 10. So 
three receivers to the right now. Um, none to the left. And now Tally screen pass. Uh, and I'm not sure who he was throwing to, but it is uh, falls to the ground incomplete. Already put up five passes on this drive. 3.57 to go. Avon scored easily on their first possession. Westfield trying to counter. So three receivers to the left, one to the right. So now one receiver to each side. Fakes the, no, uh, fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. He throws deep to the, on, down the right. Did he make the catch? No, he dropped it, incomplete. Good effort, though. So already six passes uh, by Tally. He's completed three of them. So 3.50 to go here in the first quarter. Westfield now 3-10 and 10 after two consecutive uh, incomplete passes. Moved the ball fairly well, and they've also had the benefit of uh, some penalty yards. Now we've got some movement at the line, and uh, the play is whistled dead here. But um, Westfield, you know, um, they're one of those communities in the suburbs. And, and you know, you, you look at the, the – um, and it's going to be against Avon, so um, – the third and ten becomes a much more manageable third and five now for the Shamrocks. But uh, two receivers to the right, one to the left now. Fakes the handoff, throws up the middle, and it is complete there. And he breaks a tackle, and he, he uh, dives toward the end zone. I think he's going to be down just shy of it, about the one. That was um, that was uh, Mason um, Peening. And uh, good for and now uh, fakes the handoff and the uh, quarterback um, tally takes it all the way in himself. So uh, give Westfield credit. I mean the way the Avon, um, the way that and that was Tally's first carry by the way. But the way that Avon um, moved the ball on their first drive, you know. Um, I thought Westfield might, you know, feel like they were in over their heads, but they um, strike back, you know, and, and now they tie it there on that extra point by Eduardo uh, Beltron. No, 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 it was no good. I apologize. I apologize. Counted my chickens before they hatched. So Avon does retain the lead 7-6. So now I, I, I try to get in the habit. It, sometimes when you're in the vantage point of the press box, it, it, it is hard to tell. There can be optic illusions. So I've got to remember to get in the habit of waiting until the official uh, um, um, raises his arms. <laughs> John Sullivan kicking off for Westfield. We have two Orioles back deep to receive. 3.38 to go. And it's fielded at about the 21. And he fixes the handoff. He goes all the way over. We got a flag. He goes over to the right side of the 30. Got a hole. And he brought down just around the 40. So that was Carmelo. Um, hold on. That was Carmelo Mitchell with the return, but it's going to be against Avon block in the back. Block in the back. And, you know, Tally, that quarterback, I give him a lot of credit. You know, he threw seven passes on that uh, drive, completed four of them. So Avon will be starting. Um, Avon will be starting, let's see, back at their own 20. So now they line up three receivers to the left. Um, and we've got um, Mitchell to the right, Steven, the running back. Now handoff to Steven. He takes it over to the uh, – no, I'm sorry, that was Jalen Love. Excuse me, Jalen Love um, in relief of uh, Jarrett Steven. And he picks up about three or four there. 
Jalen Love is a 5'3", uh, 150-pound running back. I've seen a lot of undersized running backs this year. So now two receivers to each side. Love still in there at running back. Give him credit for... Uh, right now, uh, now he, he breaks through, and this time he's got a first down up to about the 37 or 38. So he's going to be a pickup of uh, 19 there by Love. So now we've got, once again, two receivers to each side. Uh, Love the running back. Quarterback and shotgun. Hands off to Love again. He takes it over to the right side, puts his head down. He gets up about four or five. So on the first drive, uh, Jarrett Stone was the go-to guy. Now it's uh, Jalen Love. Both are juniors. Steven, by far the most, the, the, the more heralded, although Love is certainly, you know, showing some promise as well. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Now fakes the handoff, throws up the middle, and it is complete, and he's uh, passed uh, the 45 up to about the 41. So now that's a gain there. They move it up to the 41. That was uh, Remington Gall with his second reception of the game. Now a handoff to the love, but they're ready for him, and they bring him down for for, for a big loss. Oh no, they're saying they're saying he fumbled. Yes, he did, and Westfield has it. So the Shamrocks, with 117 to go here in the first quarter, have the ball with a chance to take the lead. Apparently, it looked like he just pulled it right out of his hands incredibly. An incredible, incredible play there. I've only seen that one other time in uh, my seven years of commentary. That was when Danville did it to Tri-West back in game four of the 2016 season and what made that play even more sensational is that the Danville defender not only took the ball out of the uh, out, out of the uh, carrier's hands but you know took it all the way in for a touchdown so now Westfield taking over at their own 45 with 102 to go here in the uh, quarter three receivers to the right and now Tally uh, he's got time he throws downfield and it is incomplete Tally already with eight passes here in the first quarter And now let's see here. And now a uh, handoff there, and he gets up for about four or five yards. That, uh, again, was Jack Pfeiffer. Give him a pickup of three. They'll bring up third and seven. Eighteen seconds now in the quarter. Um, looks like there will be at least one more play. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Now handoff once again to Pfeiffer. Breaks a, a tackle, but then he's swarmed by a three or four Orioles. And it dropped her on the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up fourth down, and that will end the quarter. So after one quarter of play here at Avon, we have a surprisingly tight one. Avon 7, Westfield 6. We'll be back after these words from our sponsors on audiosportsonline.com. State Bank of Lisbon serving you across Hendricks and Boone counties. Count on us for your mortgage loan. Count on State Bank of Lisbon serving you across Hendricks and Boone counties. Count on us for your mortgage loan, home equity, and banking needs. 
Mention this ad and get a free gift when Avon wins on Friday nights. Visit us at statebankofliston.com. That's statebankofliston.com to see our bank dog, Charlie, welcome you. McNamara Florist has been Indy's hometown florist since 1954, providing home, business, hospital, and funeral home deliveries of outstanding fresh arrangements and plants throughout the greater Indianapolis area, including Avon. McNamara Florist is famous for its unique floral designs for all occasions that help its, that help its clients express their emotions through flowers and floral giftware. Visit any of McNamara's visit any of McNamara Florist's seven convenient locations for outstanding personal service and floral design or to select from the renowned home decor merchandise including stunning Christmas classics. Also think of McNamara Florist to provide your local needs for a wedding. Also think of McNamara Florist to provide your floral needs for weddings, home parties or corporate functions. Contact a sales representative at McNamara Florist at 317-579-7900. That's 317-579-7900 or visit McNamaraFlorist.com. That's McNamaraFlorists.com. McNamaraFlorists.com, excuse me. No S at the end. So anyway, uh, back here at Avon, uh, we're, uh, well, we just did start the uh, second quarter, but the, with a uh, uh, encroachment penalty against um, Avon on what was going to be a punt. So that brings it up from fourth and seven to fourth and two. That moves the ball up to the Avon 47. And so now let's see if that changes Westfield's strategy if they decide to go for it. Um, Avon scored on the first possession on a five-yard um, rush by Jarrett Steven. Sam Miller kicked the extra point. However, a Avon um, scored a touchdown on the ensuing drive on a one-yard uh, touchdown rush by quarterback Nick Talley. Uh, but the extra point favored, so Avon retains the lead 7-6. Now two receivers to the left, one to the right. A uh, Westfield going for it. Tally rolls to his left. He throws. He's got a completion for the first down. That'll be a pickup. That'll be a pickup of about nine. So let's see. Now two receivers to the um, right, one to the left. Now uh, uh, fakes the handoff, but he's brought down for a, a big sack. 9.22 to go. So that there, that's a loss of eight yards there for Tally. Now uh, fakes the handoff, and uh, Phillips has uh, now a five. Uh, I'm sorry, Tally has some room on the left side. He gets about five, but we have a flag, so let's see if it counts or not. At holding against um, holding against against Westfield. Eight fifty-five to go here in the second quarter. Avon uh, with a seven-six lead. Each team scored on its first possession, then. Jalen Rose fumbled for Avon on his second possession. Westfield recovered and is trying to take the lead. A missed extra point by Westfield is the difference in the score right now. So now two receivers to the right, one to the left. And now a tally throws deep down the right side. And, oh, he had it and he dropped it. Yeah, no, and he might have been, and now he throws the ball angrily. Well, he better be careful. I mean, that, you know, there's some, some officials would have called that an unsportsmanlike conduct. So two receivers to each side now. Now fakes the handoff. Tally 
Throws d- deep down the middle, and it is. Did he get the ca- catch? Yes, he did. And he might have the first down out of it. That's a pickup of about uh, about 25 yards there. So now uh, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Gives it now to Pfeiffer, but he stopped. Uh, he he uh, go, changes directions a couple of times, but only gets back to about the line of scrimmage. But they did give him, they did give him the, the uh, yard for the first down, though. Yeah, he was, it was he didn't get much, but he got what he needed at least. So now, Westfield keeps the drive alive. They will take a lead with any score here. Now, uh, fakes the handoff to Pfeiffer. Um, Tally takes it up himself, and he gets about four. Seven forty-one here to go in the second quarter. It's a very pleasant evening here in Avon. Fifty-three degrees. It's supposed to warm up, I believe, to seventy today. So two receivers to the uh, left, now one to the right. And now we've got, um, now uh, the, the quarterback steps back, looks uh, over to the um, sidelines for instructions, now t- retakes his formation and shotgun. Now picks the, hand, now um, yeah, he does hand off to, um, to Pfeiffer, who doesn't get much, however. So now uh, takes a snap, throws down, his, and he's got the reception inside the 10, inside the 5. Did he stay in bounds? So he takes it all the way down to the 6. So Westfield knocking on the door of taking the lead here. That was Aiden Franzen there, by the way, with a uh, 20 yard gain. And now, handoff there to uh, Pfeiffer, but he only gets about a yard. Now two receivers to the left, one to the right. Now um, hands off there to uh, after uh, Pfeiffer, and he gets the touchdown. So Westfield takes the lead with 5:47 to go. So Westfield, you know, uh, hanging tough. Well, not only hanging tough, but actually leading. I, I you know, um, I was expecting it to be an Avon blowout, but then you know, then again, in the varsity game last night, the third ranked. Orioles were really, you know, uh, given a scare. Ended up prevailing only 20 to 17. A game that I thought they'd, you know, win easily. And the extra point is up and good. So Avon now a 13-7 lead with 5:47 to go. So if, if I were a betting man, I would say on this possession they're going to give it to Jarrett Steven a lot, and you know he'll probably score a touchdown. But we we shall see. That's why you play the game. I'll, I'll tell you though, um, it, it's um, I I always love doing these um, JV and freshman games. They're a lot of fun. It's great. It's a great supplement to what I do on Friday nights. Um, and it's been really frustrating for me because I've missed out on three separate uh, games that I was slated to commentate for Avon and uh, counting JV and varsity. Excuse me, counting JV and freshman this year because of. Um, of you know the the uh, one single game and then one uh, double header that was uh, uh, postponed because of rain to Monday evening uh, to t- a couple of Monday evenings when I was not available to work. So um, it, it, I really appreciate being here. It, it's you know, been four four weeks since I've done one of these games and uh, I I have greatly missed it. So I, I'm honored to be back. 
and hopefully next year I'll, you know, I'll have better luck with the weather and get to do all these games. And, and now the kickoff, uh, it's, uh, he mishandled it, and, you know, he, well, he, uh, after contact, got about five or six yards, and we got a late hit, so let's see what that's all about. Nevertheless, uh, uh, I admire the returner's um, drive there. I believe that was, yeah, that was Remington Gall for Avon. Yeah, it's pleasant weather, 53 degrees. It should warm up probably to 60 or so by the end of this game. We have a sparse crowd. Um, looks like we have, uh, I'd say, somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 people here in the stadium, uh, including about, I would say, 40 Westfield fans who made the trip about 45 miles there from Hamilton County. Uh, it's got the penalty. That I didn't catch what it was. It's going to be against Westfield, though. 5.38 to go, and the Orioles are now with the two, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Jarrett Steven, yes, as I predicted, back in there at running back. He was a terror on the opening drive. He was a terror in his little action in the varsity game last week. And now uh, handoff to Steven, but they're right on top of him, and they bring him down for a loss. But yeah, I mean, I think he's going to be a major Division One Division One player in two years, and a lot of people haven't heard of him yet, but they certainly will next year after Samson James graduates. And I think because Avon runs just a one running back offense, you know, a lot of teams in the state, you know, Jarrett Steven would have been starting as a freshman and certainly as a sophomore. And now three receivers to the right, one to the left, and. Throws deep now down the left side to Gall, but it is uh, to, he, he made the catch, but out of bounds. I'm hey, sorry, that was uh, Carmelo Mitchell, excuse me. Carmelo Mitchell. So that will bring up third and 12. So suddenly this game does not look like a sure thing. And by the way, that was, um, that was the first incompletion for Avon in this game. Only their fourth pass, 446 to go here in the second quarter. Westfield 13, Avon 7. Four forty six to go, the very big third down for Avon here. So now drops back to pass. He's pressured, and we got a flag here. He dodges a sack. He gets rid of it, throws it way down the left field, and it is caught, and he could go, yes, he could go away for the touchdown, and he will, but will it count? Because we got a flag. Again, there is a flag. It's, it's a 67-yard touchdown if it counts. But it, it's coming back. It was a, he threw down, he got rid of it in, uh, to Remington Gall who made an amazing catch under good coverage and the receiver um, the receiver lost his balance and Gall, uh, leaving Gall wide open to go into the end zone, but it will not count, unfortunately. Four thirty-one to go here in the uh, quarter. Avon's, uh, Avon's quarterback, Peyton Garrett, wears number 81. I believe he's the only quarterback I've ever seen wear that number at any level of football. I, d I think the NFL is the only major, I don't know about the CFL, the Canadian Football League, but I, I, I don't think they, are re they restrict numbers to positions um, in college or high school like they do in the NFL. Oh, and now it's a bad snap, and uh, Garrett gets it, and it's going to be either a safety or a fumble, and now it's a fumble return uh, for a touchdown. Oh, so now all of a sudden Avon, you know, with a multiple possession deficit there. I did not catch which Avon player got it, but, yeah, probably um, Garrett should have just, you know, kicked it out of the end zone for the safety. As it is now, it's 19-7 to with the conversion pending. So now Westfield with two scores in a minute 37. And now um, Beltron for the extra point. It is up and it is good. So Beltron two for three on extra points, making it 20 to seven.
So, uh, disappointing start to Avon. They trail 20-7, to 7, although certainly, you know, they can pile on a bunch of points in a, in a hurry, so I do not count them out by any means. But, you know, it's, it's ironic, though. Last week, you know, Samson James, you know, obviously bound for Ohio State. Last week, I commentated Avon Varsity for the first time after doing about 15 or so of their uh, JV and freshman broadcasts, you know, over the last three seasons. Um, and Samson James was relatively contained by Fishers. I think he got 59, 60 yards. And, you know, no, he, got, he, got, he was 21 for 67. That's it. Um, and then Jarrett Steven comes in in the fourth quarter, and he only rushes twice, but it goes for 92 yards and a touchdown. And now he is squib and it is fielded and it's bobbled. So well, they got to be you got to be careful handling those house those kickoffs on bounces. Those are dangerous. So uh, Avon will be taking over about the thirty. Did anybody catch the name of the Westfield guy who recovered the? No, uh, I couldn't okay. see yeah, I couldn't either. Okay. Yeah, apparently nobody in the press box got the name of the Westfield player who got the touchdown. But anyway, so Avon takes over at the thirty. Trying to get something going, and it, that's not a phrase that we've been saying in association with Avon football a whole lot in recent years. But now Peyton Garrett in, um, in shotgun, two receivers to the left, one to the right, Jarrett Steven, the running back, and now we've got a whistle here, and Westfield takes their first time out with 3.50 to go. And at that, we'll take a short pause for a few words from our sponsors on audiosportsonline.com. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon football broadcasts. They're conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in, in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone number is 317-243-2372. That's 317-243-2372. And they're open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at ReynoldsBodyShop.com. That's ReynoldsBodyShop.com. Well, back here at Avon, um, we're about to resume play with uh, your Orioles surprisingly trailing the Westfield Shamrocks by a score of 20-7 to 7 here in junior varsity football. My name is Lex Zorn, and it's an honor and pleasure to have you with me today, as always. Avon, one of my homes away from home, along with Plainfield and Cascade, so two receivers to the left, one to the right. Garrett in shotgun, Steven the running back. High snap, but he gets it. Screen pass completed over uh, to, to Mitchell, uh, and he uh, breaks uh, uh, or tries to weave away from his defender, and he gets up close to the first down. So Garrett uh, doing pretty well through the air so far, completing four of his first five passes for 57 yards. Two each to Mitchell and Gall. So now, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Steven, the running back, Garrett in shotgun. And he gives it to Garrett, this, uh, to Steven this time. And he's up for about th three. Now he ends up getting about five. He got two or three yards after contact. And speaking of which, the varsity game I commentated last night was Cascade at Indian Creek down in Trafalgar, Indiana, about 20 miles south of Indianapolis. And um, so um, and then Steven picks up five on that one. But, you know, they um, one thing that killed Cascade last night was I would estimate that Indian Creek got over. Uh, they had two 100-yard rushers, and I would guess that the team combined had over 100 yards of rushing after contact. Cascade you know, definitely needs to work on its tackling. So now fix that up to Steven, and he's uh, incomplete, though. He was trying to hit Mitchell. It was just a little too low. Mitchell had you know, to dive down to try to get it. Four for six through the air for Peyton Garrett here. Clock stops with 2.42 to go in the second quarter. Westfield 20, Avon 7. Um, Avon has not played badly, but Westfield's played very, very well. And I especially give them credit. I mean, they've run off 20 after Avon scored easily on the first drive. Westfield's, you know, come back with the eye of the Tiger. With, um, three touchdowns now, including one on defense. So two receivers to the left, one to the right. Garrett takes a snap. He's got plenty of time. He throws deep downfield. He's trying to hit uh, Gall, and he makes the catch, and he's going to go. Yes, he does. Remington Gall. And they got the touchdown, so the Orioles now cut it to one possession. 
20 to 13 with the extra point pending. So now Sam Miller on the extra point. And it is up and <laughs> it is good. So that young lady is now 19 for 19 when I've commentated her. Wow. I, I, I hope so much that she, uh, that, she, that she becomes their varsity kicker. Still got two years. So that was uh, 55 yards there um, for to, 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 to Gall, for, from Garrett to Gall. Yeah, so now we got the cheerleaders actually singing the school song. I don't recall ever hearing that, um, ever recalling cheerleaders singing the school song before. And, you know, um, they, well, I, I really wonder how many people know the words to their own school songs. Because I, 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 you know, I went to Madison Consolidated High School. I went to um, dozens of uh, football and basketball games over the years. And I can honestly say I, I don't know the words to the school song. I never did. So now the uh, kickoff mishandled. And now he's brought down at the 10. They could give Avon a lot of credit. I mean, when they were down 20, to, Avon being down 20 to 7, you know, for most, like when Cascade goes down 20 to 7, it's usually they're, they, they fall in. Uh, and, and I mean, they're, they're a program, they're an up and coming program, they're getting better. They're decent now. They're going to be, I think they're going to be good a year from now when the bulk of their stars are seniors. But, um, But you know, <laughs> they, they you know they they have a hard time coming from behind. But Avon, you know, the kind of offense they have, you know, it's a different story. And now, uh, handoff there to uh, Pfeiffer. He breaks through the line and he gets up for about seven. So Pfeiffer, the go-to guy on the ground for the Shamrocks today. One fifty-six to go. And Westfield, keep in mind, they do they have they have. To, um, I could have sworn they took a timeout earlier. They're showing a three on the scoreboard. I think they only have two. 145 to go, and they do get the ball first to start the second half. So now uh, fakes the hand. No, they give it to Pfeiffer, and he might have the, yeah, he does have the first. And maybe a yard or two more. We do have a flag. I guess there's no flag after all. So uh, Pfeiffer uh, does get the first down. So it's first and ten at the twenty now. Three receivers to the le three receivers to the left, one to the right. Westfield still with a fair shot to get some points here in the half. And now uh, screen uh, throw all of the way over to the uh, left side of the field, and it is complete for about eleven. See, that was uh, Adam Gerritsen for the, uh, for the, uh, for the Shamrocks. Picks up 11 there. So three receivers to the right, one to the left. Picks the handoff. Now, and it's a tipped pass, and it is intercepted. And now he's uh, uh, still uh, up, finally brought down at about the 33. So now all of a sudden Avon could take the lead. They need a touchdown and a uh, Sam Miller extra point, and they're, they're in the lead now. So first, uh, first blunder of the game for Westfield. Those tip passes are dangerous, I'll tell you. So each team with one turnover, Avon lost a fumble in the first quarter. So now the Orioles line up. They've got uh, now uh, Avon taking it their first time out, and this is why you know, I wish they you know they'd 
had done at least one play first, but still this is why you save your, your timeouts for the last two minutes. That's good fundamental football. You know, I cringe when, you know, um, I see Cascade take an unnecessary time. Oh, they don't do it. Cascade does not do it a lot. They're not, you know, they're a fairly solid fundamental team. They just need to get, you know, older and bigger. I mean, they have, they have, they're, they're taking the steps to become a major 2A program. So Avon taking over at the 32, a touchdown. They're, they're, they trail 20 to 14, trying to get the momentum of this game back. They started off red hot on their first possession with um, an easy score. Then Westfield ran off three touchdowns in a row. Now Avon lining up two receivers to the left, one to the right. Uh, I believe Jarrett Steven is still in there at running back. Yeah, and Garrett takes it, drops back. He's got plenty of time, rolls to his right now, and he gets rid of it. So the clock stops with 29 seconds to go. It'll be second and 10. So uh, five for eight through the air for Peyton Garrett this morning. Under the Saturday morning sun. A very pleasant breeze, very pleasant breeze coming into the press box. And JV football is quite an adventure for us commentators. Um, I'll, I'll explain that in, in a little bit. So now uh, Garrett takes the snap, drops it back, screen pass. It is completed there to Steven. He's got the first down down the right side. He could go all the way, 15, and yeah, he does. So Jarrett Steven with a 25-yard touchdown reception. And the Orioles are tied with the conversion pending. Jarrett Steven with his second touchdown of the game. So I've commentated three Jarrett Steven touchdowns. The last uh, uh, eight days, I commentated a varsity, I believe his first career varsity touchdown last uh, week against Fishers. He scored from five yards out on the first possession, and now Sam Miller um, tried to put the Orioles in the lead, and she does. So uh, it looked almost certain that... Um, that uh, that Avon was going to, you know, a trail going into the locker room, but uh, two quick touchdowns um, change everything. Um, there was the 55 yard, 55 yard touchdown pass from Garrett to Gall, and then the interception, uh, which Jarrett Steven converted into a 35 yard touchdown rush. Westfield does get the ball first to start the um, to start the second half. So apparently the cheerleaders are singing the school fight song after every score. So now Sam Miller kicks. And the ball travels over 40 yards. Nice leg on that young lady. And it is returned up to about the 32. I believe that was uh, yeah, peening there on the, um, on the return. 14 seconds to go, so I would imagine that I, I would guess that uh, that the um, Sh Shamrocks will just uh, kneel out. So now, yeah, and uh, so they kneel at the clock. So overall, a uh, and the team just start to uh, the. They hesitated, but now start to walk to the locker room. So uh, overall, uh, you know, uh, a very exciting first half. Avon gets off to a red hot, hot start, then has a mini collapse, but they finish strong and they take the lead into the locker room 21-20. Uh, we'll be back with a recap after these uh, words from our sponsors here on audiosportsonline.com. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition. Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of that. Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules and information at redcobrawrestlingacademy.com that's redcobrawrestlingacademy.com 
www.hendricksonboone.com. State Bank of Liston serving you across Hendrickson Boone counties. Count on us for your mortgage loan, home equity, and banking needs. Mention this ad and get a free gift when Avon wins on Friday nights. Visit us at statebankofliston.com to see our bank dog, Charlie, welcome you. That's statebankofliston.com. McNamara Florist has been Indy's hometown florist since 1954, providing home, business, hospital, and funeral home deliveries of outstanding fresh arrangements and plants throughout the greater Indianapolis area, including Avon. McNamara Florist is famous for its unique floral designs for all occasions that help its clients express their emotions through flowers and floral giftware. Visit any of McNamara Florist's seven convenient locations for outstanding personal service and floral design or to select from the renowned home decor merchandise including stunning Christmas classics. Also think of McNamara Florist to provide your floral needs for weddings, home parties, or corporate functions. Contact a sales representative for McNamara Florist at 319-579-7900. That's 317-579-7900. Or visit their website at McNamaraFlorist.com. That's McNamaraFlorist.com. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcasts. They're conveniently located at 4325, that's 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone number is 317-243-2372. That's 317-243-2372. And they're open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at ReynoldsBodyShop.com. That's ReynoldsBodyShop.com. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition. Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of that. Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon. That's 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon, across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the red brick building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages, including third grade and under, and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules, and information at redcobrawrestlingacademy.com. That's redcobrawrestlingacademy.com. Well, back here at Avon, we're at halftime in this junior varsity football game. Uh, it's been a wild and woolly game uh, in which your Avon Orioles have a 21-20 lead over the conference rival Westfield Shamrocks. It's a game in which Avon started off red hot, then had a brief collapse before finishing strong and getting the lead back. Um, with 6.21 to go, Avon opened the scoring on the opening drive of the game on a five-yard touchdown rush by Jarrett Stephen. Sam Miller's extra point made it 7-0. However, Westfield uh, was unfazed and came back and scored on their um, opening possession on a one-yard touchdown rush by quarterback Nick Talley with 3.38 to go in the first quarter. However, Eduardo Beltran was no good on the extra point, so Avon retained the lead 7-6. Um, however, following a Jalen Rose fumble, then um, then um, Avon actually uh, took, uh, Westfield actually took the lead with 5.47 to go in the second quarter on a um, five-yard touchdown rush by Jack Pfeiffer. Um, Beltron was good on the extra point, um, giving Westfield a 13-7 lead. And then on Avon's ensuing possession, a bad snap resulted in Westfield recovering in the end zone for a touchdown, and Beltron's extra point made it 20-7. But then um, Avon struck right back with a 55-yard 55 55 yard touchdown pass from Peyton, um, Peyton Garrett to Remington Gull. Uh, Miller's extra point made it 20-14. to 14, And then following an interception on a tipped pass, Jarrett Steven rushed 35 yards for a touchdown with 19 seconds to go. And Miller's extra point um, gave Avon the lead back uh, and brought us to our current score of uh, 21 um uh, of of twenty one twenty, a look at the individual statistics. First of all, for first of all for your Avon Orioles, for your Avon Orioles, um, 
Peyton Garrett has completed five of eight passes for 112 yards and one touchdown. Uh, Remington Gall has three receptions for 70, 79 yards and a touchdown. Three receptions for 79 yards and a touchdown. While Carmelo Mitchell has two receptions for 33 yards. On the ground, uh, Jarrett Steven has seven rushes for 42 yards and two touchdowns. While Jalen Love has four. Uh, Jarrett Steven has six, has seven rushes for 42 yards and two touchdowns. While Jalen Rush, Jalen Jalen Love has four rushes for 15 yards. Meanwhile, for the um, Westfield Shamrocks, for the Westfield Shamrocks um, quarterback, um, quarterback Nick Talley has completed eight of uh, 14 passes for um, for 170 yards and one interception. His uh, leading receiver um, is Aiden Franson, who has four receptions for um, 39 yards, and uh, Mason Pining, who has two receptions for 39 yards. In addition... Um, in, in addition, Adam Gerritsen has... Uh, two receptions for 20 yards and and then uh, Webster has uh, one for nine yards so um, and then oh then on the ground um, Jack Pfeiffer has eight rushes for 21 yards and um, 21 yards and one touchdown while Nick Talley has five rushes for minus eight yards so basically this is a game where you know Avon you know you, you just always expect Avon's going to win because they're Avon you know um Westfield is a developing program um I should that's I shouldn't say that um they 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 they've established themselves in this decade as a great program they advanced all the way to the class 5a state championship game in 2013 losing to Cathedral uh so that was quite appropriate that the Fighting Irish played the Shamrocks for the um, championship, and Cathedral ended up uh, prevailing in that one. Um, and uh, then three years later, which was in 2016, just two years ago, Westfield won the Class 5A state championship, and their tournament success during the uh, 2015 and 2016 seasons forced them to move up to Class 6A beginning last season. Um, the Shamrocks, you know, in Class 6A, we don't know if they're going to be as dominant as they were in Class 5A. Probably not as much, although the um, population you know, there in Hamilton County as well as here in Hendricks County has been exploding in recent years. You know, Indiana, Indianapolis is such uh, a, a unique um, uh, Indianapolis. Indianapolis is just such a unique. Um, um, major city in that there are there are no um, there are no um, natural borders you know no bodies of water no mountain ranges to keep the expansion of the metropolitan area so it just keeps growing outward and especially as hit Hendricks and Hamilton counties and that's where you look at some of these uh, schools they've moved up you know two three um two or three classes over the years in football just because their enrollments have grown so much but anyway um and by the way i apologize um i meant there was a, a reception earlier i um accidentally credited to maximus webster it actually uh was sam baldwin so i apologize to that for, for westfield but now the team's returned to the field here for second half action um but you know, that's also that's before we uh, uh, begin the second half. Let's uh, look at what happened last night here in um, uh, the, with the other Hendricks County teams. Like I said, Avon beat um, Avon uh, got got a big win. They beat um, uh, Westfield twenty to thirteen, closer than expected, but still the Orioles improved to six and one. Are likely to at least retain their number three ranking. Um, Brownsburg will likely remain at number two after a 70 to 53 win over Zionsville. The 53 for Zionsville is eye popping, but certainly you know the Brownsburg, you know, um, having an outstanding season at seven and zero. Hard to believe they have not um, 
won a sectional, and I think since uh, I think since 2011, I'll have to look that up. Then in Class 5A, Plainfield um, had a tougher time than expected, but still pulled out a road win at Franklin, 40 to 39. Um, and now Sam Miller to kick off to start the second half. Kicks, uh, and I think all our kickoffs have gone over 40 yards too. That one fielded about the 16 on a bounce, and then brought up to the. Sorry, I had to sneeze there, so I, t I had to sneeze there, so I took off my head gear. Um. So anyway, because uh, I, I didn't want to sneeze on my microphone, and I didn't want you all to have to hear it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, but any, anyway, then um, in Class 3A, Danville, um, after that 0-3 start, won their fourth consecutive game, beating the Frankfurt Hot Dogs 62-6. to Danville jumped back into the polls this week at number 14, should rise a few spots now, possibly into the top 10, so it's good to see they're finally getting on track. Um so two receivers to the left one, and now a handoff to um, Pfeiffer. He's got some room over on the uh, on the right side, and I think he's got the um, I think he's got the first down. It'll be real close at least. Now he's going to be a yard short. Nevertheless, a good run there. Westfield only trailing by one. It looked like they looked certain to take the lead into the locker room before that interception. So now two receivers to the left, one to the right. Pfeiffer, the only running back. Um, Tally under shot, Tally under center, fix the handoff. He throws deep up the middle now, and it is just overthrown. The intended receiver there was was uh, Carson Voorhis, V-O-O-R-H-I-S. 11.04, your time of day now here in Avon. So two receivers to the right, one to the left now. Takes the snap, hands off to uh, Pfeiffer this time. He's got some room, and he's got the first down and more over to the uh, left side of the field, and he's up close to the 50 now. There is a flag, so let's see if it will count or not. So it is going to be against uh, Westfield, so it will be coming back. So uh, all of a sudden, a third and uh, one becomes third and six. Oh, well, it's uh, a holding. And then a sideline warning, okay. And... So now two receivers to the right, one to the left. And now, now we got a flag before the, the play's whistle dead. But running out what happened last night, uh, Troy West trying to get their season on track. They got a, uh, not a spectacular win, but they did get a win 16-12 over North Montgomery and finally rounding it out down in Class 2A in the game that I commentated. Cascade uh, had a painful loss at Indian Creek 45-14 to down in Trafalgar, about 20 miles south of the city. Uh, it was, you know, I, I thought, I was hopeful Cascade would be more competitive, but Indian Creek is a great team. They, they've had 17 straight winning seasons. They're one of the top 3A programs in the state. So Cascade, I think, is probably a year away from beating a, a program of that magnitude. So now throw just deep down the right side, but, yeah, he the receiver didn't look in time. So it'll bring it fourth down. So now uh, Avon will get the ball back, and um, with a score, 
Of course, assuming that I, I don't, I don't think that Avon, I think Avon would go for the one since Sam Miller seems to be so automatic. But I think that um, you know, still, you know, an eight-point lead and then having you know scored uh, twenty-one unanswered points, Avon would clearly have the momentum at that point. Even though Westfield, obviously, I wouldn't count them out being only down by one possession. And now the punt is down to just you know, past the fifty at about the forty-seven or forty-eight. But you know, when um, so so Avon will be taken over at about the forty-five, eight thirty-two to go. <clears throat> so now we've got uh, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Now he gives it to Steven. He's got a little bit of a hole, and he gets up for about four. 8.14 to go. Steven has a knack for big plays. I've probably commentated him cover. I've probably commentated five Jarrett Steven touchdowns that were 70 yards or more, counting uh, freshman JV and varsity. And, you know, I, I remember three receivers, okay, three receivers to the right, one to the left. So now um, screen pass is complete to Steven. He breaks a tackle. He's got the first down past the 45, and it dives, it gets about up to the 40. That'll be a pickup of about 15 yards for Steven. So um, Avon first and 10 now at the Westfield 40. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Now hand off to Steven. He's got a hole up the middle, and he's uh, close to the, another first down. Pickup of about seven there. Under seven minutes to go now. Give him credit for eight on that one. So Avon clearly with the momentum, only a one-point lead, but, you know, they've come back from 13 down now. So now two receivers to each side. Steven, the running back, Garrett, and shotgun. And now fakes the handoff to Steven, and uh, Garrett rolls to his uh, left, and he's knocked out of bounds right around the line of scrimmage. We do have a flag. With 6.26 to go here in the third quarter at Avon, we're in game seven of nine of the regular season. It's going to be holding against against Avon. Some um, fan just shouted super loudly, why are you holding the balls go going the other way? That's a stupid mistake, he added. One thing about these sparsely attended games, you know, the, the, the really... Um, Animated fans, you know, stand out a lot more. So now uh, we've got um, second and 15 now for the Orioles at the uh, Westfield 45. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Steven, the running back. Now fakes the handoff to Steven. Garrett got plenty of time. He throws deep down the middle, and it is, it is incomplete. So that will bring up third and 15, a very big... Third down for uh, for the, the Shamrocks. So, um, Garrett now fakes the handoff, throws up the middle. He's got a man open. He dodges a tackle, but he goes back to try to get some extra yards, and he's brought down uh, well short of the first. 
That was a goal there, picked up of about 10. They're bringing up fourth and five. I believe the Orioles are going to go for it. They, so they, they, they break huddle now. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Steven, the running back now. Fakes handoff to Steven, throws up the middle, and it is caught, and he's got the first down, down at about the 23. That's a gain of a, a 10 or 11, once again to Gall. Gain of 11 there. And that, by my count, puts Gall over the century mark. I have him at 101 now. 5-10 to go. Avon looking very businesslike on this drive. So uh, one receiver to the left, three to the right. Steven, the running back. Garrett in shotgun, takes a snap. Hands off to Steven this time. They're ready for him, and he gets just about to the line of scrimmage. He might have picked up one. Yeah, they give him credit for no gain. Stevens 10 for 54, which is a, a modest 5.4 yards per carry by his average, but he does have two touchdowns. So now uh, we've got uh, Gull, uh, excuse me, um, Mitchell to the left, three receivers to the right, Steven, the running back, um, Garrett in shotgun. Quick pass, and it is complete over on the left side over to, to, to uh, Mitchell. And he's got uh, the first down, yes. Yes, he does. And now we've got uh, an, injury, an injury for Westfield as the ball is marked at the 11. That'll be a pickup of 12. So now three consecutive completions on this drive for, um, for Garrett. And now the, the injured player getting up, and he's uh, limping but knocking, walking off the field on his own power. So hopefully he will be okay. Getting an nice ovation from these fans. So now we've got, um, we have Mitchell lined up to the uh, right, three receivers to the left, Steven, the running back. Garrett in shotgun, hands it to Steven. They're ready for him. He does manage to plow his way inside the 10, maybe to the nine. Steven has been the featured running back on every possession except for uh, one in which it was Jalen Love. And that drive ended with a love fumble as Steven gets credit for two on that one. On that play. So now we've got Mitchell lining up to the right. And see, we've got... Uh, and now... Oh now Screen pass, and it's uh, to Steven, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. So nine yards from, nine yards from um, Garrett to Steven. And so now it's 27-20 with the conversion pending. And those are the first points of the uh, second half coming with 2.53 to go. So Steven with three touchdowns on the game, two rushing, one receiving, and Sam Miller on the extra point. Oh, and uh, no good. I think it was just a little uh, wide left. So 
Uh, very sad to say Sam Miller, you know, um, <laughs> and now uh, is, it breaks her perfect streak when I commentate her. She was 20 for 20 up to that point. That is her first miss. But, yeah, 20 for 21 ain't bad. I mean, uh, and I'll tell you, one reason why I don't rule out her playing varsity ball, even at a school as big as Avon, because I have seen a lot of kickers, including at some of the bigger schools, 4A, 5A schools, that, you know, I've seen some kickers at those schools who don't even hit their extra points consistently. So, um, you know, um, when you have somebody who can just hit his or, in this case, her extra points consistently, you know, that'll go a long way toward getting you favor. I mean, I see teams that, you know, go for, you know, um, the, the two uh on every time they get a touchdown. And now Westfield, all of a sudden, they um, um, uh, they return it past the 45 and had he, the um, returner broken that tackle. Sam Miller would have been their last chance to make the tackle. That would have been interesting to see. Um, she looked like she was ready to go for it, so I give that young lady a lot of credit. And, you know, I mean, she was, you know, she was moving in his direction. You know, when Morton Anderson, um, you know, I'll hold that thought. But two receivers to the left, one to the right. Now 2.33 to go. Westfield, um, the touchdown and an extra point away from tying it. Now a uh, rush up the middle. And for about two, that was a Pfeiffer again. He and Tally have all the Westfield rushes in this game. So uh, two, uh, two yards there by, and now this time he takes the, uh, but he is brought down for a huge sack. That's gonna be about a 10 yard loss there. They hit him with authority. Oh my God, that was, that was vicious. Yeah, so they, they yeah, they gave him, it was a ten yard loss there by Tally. So now all of a sudden, you know, um now all of a sudden it goes from um, from second and eight to third and eighteen here for the Shamrocks, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Now um, drops back to pass, throws up the middle. It is complete inside the 40 up to about the 37, so they, uh, it, it's going to be a very manageable fourth down here. The reception made there by, by Carson Voorhis. They give him credit for 14. First completion of the half for... Um, for Tally. 54 seconds to go in the third quarter, and now we've got a, a timeout. Timeout Westfield, and they have um, a very important uh, third and four here. And even though they're oh, it, even though they're still in the third quarter and they're only down by seven, Avon has such an explosive offense um, that if Westfield does not score in this possession. There's a serious danger that they would not get the ball back until Avon has at least a two possession lead. And that would be very hard for Westfield to overcome. So the, this uh, play that they want to, you know, I'm not a fan of using timeouts before the last two minutes of the half, but this is one, this is probably a good timeout by Westfield here on fourth and four. So now, two, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Five for the running back, tally and shotgun. A very big uh, fourth and four now. Takes the snap, and he dodges a sack, and he throws deep down the left side. Oh, he bobbled it, and he dropped it. It was catchable. He might have lost it in the sun. But nevertheless, Avon will be taking over on downs. Last five passes from tally. Uh, only one completion and then one interception as well. That interception leading to the go-ahead touchdown for Avon. 
the Orioles on a, you know, it's ironic, you know, Avon after the, the seven nothing lead, then um, Avon, uh, then excuse me, Westfield went on a 20 nothing run and then Avon has countered that with a 20 nothing run. 44 seconds to go now. 11.22, your time of day here in Avon. Very bright and sunny day. Two receivers to each side now. With a, a score, Avon would take a firm command of this game. Hand off to Steven. He's got some room on the right side, and he uh, gets up for about four or five. Uh, Jalen Love, excuse me. Jalen Love with, I believe, his first action of the half. Yes, yeah, Steven wears 20, Love wears... Uh, Steven wears 21, Love wears 20. Give him credit for four on that one. 13 seconds to go in the quarter. Avon with the ball up by seven. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Love the running back. High snap, but he gets it over to Love. But he's they're right on top of him, and he's brought down um, for a slight loss. He And now, wait, the Westfield's saying there's a fumble. And that they that they have it, but let's see. There's no time left on the clock here in the third quarter. So I'm not clear. I I think I think Avon has the ball. It looks like that's the, okay. Well, anyway, we'll see what happens when we come back over the fourth quarter. I think it will still be. Um, I think it will still be. Um, West, I think it will still be um, Avon's ball, but we'll see your score after three quarters of play here at at Avon. Um, Avon 27, Westfield 20. We'll be back with the thrilling conclusion after these words from our sponsors on audiosportsonline.com. State Bank of Liston serving you across Hendricks and Boone counties. Count on us for your mortgage loan, home equity, and banking needs. Mention this ad and get a free gift when Avon wins on Friday nights. Visit us at statebankofliston.com to see our bank dog, Charlie, welcome you. Well, back here at Avon, we're about to start the fourth quarter of this barn burner of a game with your Avon Orioles leading the Westfield Shamrocks. Um, by a score of 27-20, Avon jumped off to a quick 7-0 lead, followed by 20 consecutive points by Westfield, followed by 20 consecutive points by Avon. Now the Orioles um, have the ball um, third and six there. And now throw down the right side, and it is nearly intercepted there. So now that will bring up a fourth down, and I would have guessed the Orioles being in their territory would punt and yeah it looks like that's what's going to happen here so westfield will get the ball back with a chance to tie with the touchdown and one or take the lead with a touchdown and the two and now uh nearly blocked it's a very high short punt and bounces at the 41, takes a big um, Westfield bounce, and then um, an Avon player comes. That was Jalen Love who comes over to cover it, uh, saving a few yards. Nevertheless, uh, Westfield will be taking over uh, just shy of the 50 at their own 49, 9.49 to go. So, you know, um, I'll tell you, I, when, a when Westfield was forced to move up to Class 6A last year, I really wondered, you know, um, if they would be able to, you know, be competitive enough to be, a, you know, a consistent top 10 team and you know, a team with a chance to make some deep tournament runs. Hold that thought here as a Pfeiffer gets the ball and he gets up for about three or four. Nine thirty six to go. But, you know, I'll tell you the way that they played Avon, you know, only losing by seven last night, you know, and now the way they're, you know, now they're only losing by seven in this one it shows they, you know, Maybe I would. Maybe they can be very competitive in Class 6A. And now Pfeiffer gets some room on the left side. He's inside the 30. So now uh, Jack Pfeiffer, uh, all of a sudden, you know, playing some of his best football of the day. Now on this drive, two rushes for 21 yards. And he's got the. Uh, He's 
He's got the um, Shamrocks in good position here and now. Uh, one receiver to the left, three to the right. And now Tally, short pass, and it is incomplete. And, well, Voorhis was furious. He, he, he clapped his hands in agony knowing he should have had that one. Second and 10 at the 30 for the uh, So now we've got, uh, okay, pining to the left. Uh, got Franzen and one other, two other. No, now Franzen goes over to, over to the sideline. Now I fix the handoff. No, uh, Pfeiffer gets it, and he goes forward for about four or five. So it'll bring up third and five or six. 8.50 to go. Avon 27, Westfield 20. It's been a wild and woolly game of sharp momentum swings, and Pfeiffer gets credit for four yards on that one. He has uh, 13 carries now by my count. 8.35 to go in the game. So now um, uh, Peening and Baldwin out to the left, uh, Voorhis to the right. Tally takes it, takes the handoff, rolls to his right. He throws into the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown! That, that was Voorhis, and now the... Uh, the Shamrocks, let's see if they go for the one for the tie or go for the two in the lead. Either way, we got a barn burner, barn burner of a finish coming at you here at Avon. That's 26 yards there on that pass. And Beltron is going for an extra point that would tie the game. He missed his first, hit his last two. And this one is up and it is good and we are tied. So, you know, I, I know that very often these uh, freshman and JV games do have the feel of exhibitions, but, you know, I think um, you know, that this is one time when, you know, these, these players, you know, I, th I think they're going to, you know, obviously, you know, it's great for these JV kids to be in this kind of position where, you know, they have to, you know, where, where they're going down to the wire. That's great. It's great for them to get that kind of game experience. And plus these, you know, kids, you know, they're looking forward to meeting each other in varsity action in a year or two. And I think, you know, obviously they want, want to get a psychological edge as well. So, you know, I think we're going to see you know, a really exciting finish with both teams really going all out to try to do it. And now a squib and it's fielded just inside the 30 brought over it and but they're right on top of him he breaks a tackle though and gets up to about the 37 so Jalen Love getting about breaking about two tackles and getting about, about five yards after contact they're showing a lot of toughness So now Avon with the game tied, 8.09 to go. They line up now. They've got um, Mitchell to the um, Mitchell to the right, and um, Griffith and one of the receiver, uh, two of the receivers to the left. Now handoff to Steven, and he's got uh, he breaks a tackle, spins around, gets up for about eight there, maybe nine. Both teams. Um, Actually, Westfield did take a timeout. They're showing with all three on the scoreboard, but they did take a timeout um, on that uh, fourth down there in the third quarter. So anyway, um, so two receivers to the left, one to the right. And now handoff again to Steven. He, and he's, uh, he gets the first and about two or three more. Again, getting a, a two or three yards after contact. So Jarrett Steven uh, getting the ball on both uh, both plays on this drive so far. Moving it inside Westfield territory to the 47, first and 10, 7.19 to go and counting. So three receivers to the left, one to the right. 
Garrett in shotgun, takes it, a fakes the handoff to Steven, throws up the middle, and it is incomplete. And we got, we got possibly a pass interference penalty there. Um, Mitchell was the intended receiver. 7.02 to go. Any score, well, we're tied, so obviously any score will put Avon in the lead. So let's see where they mark it. It will be a first down. So they're setting it at the 32, so Avon in great shape here. Now I know Avon is capable of, you know, a lot of very big explosive scoring plays, but you know, I wouldn't blame them if they did a lot of conservative stuff so that Westfield would have little time to do anything, you know, if they get the ball back, when they get the ball back after a score. So now handoff to Steven again, but they're ready for him and he's brought down right around the line of scrimmage. So that, yeah, marking him right at the line of scrimmage there. Steven, you know, he's 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 adventurous. I mean, he's the type he'll he'll run sideways all the way across the field looking for yards, and sometimes, you know, sometimes it doesn't work, and you know, like like there. But other times, you know, he'll break through for an 80, 90 yard gain. So three receivers to the left, one to the right. Um, Garrett in shotgun gives it to Steven again, and they're ready for him, and he's brought down. He might have just gotten a yard, so it's going to be third and long for the. Orioles. So, yeah, and there's the two consecutive plays where they held Steven for no yards, third and ten now. So let's see. Now uh, Garrett drops back to pass. He's got time. He throws into the end zone. It is intercepted near the goal line. Intercepted. So one interception from each team now. It's not a fatal interception. It was granted it was third down instead of fourth, but you know it's still not a whole lot different from from a long punt. Nevertheless, uh, Westfield does take over with 5:35 to go. So, um, anyway, Westfield taking over at their own four. 5.21 to go. Tied. I've never commentated an overtime football game before. So, Pfeiffer gets up for about three. So, I would imagine that um, that Westfield will try to run a, a, lot of the, a lot of time off the clock here. Pfeiffer gets credit for two there. And now a pass over to the... We got a, f a, f a completion there on the right side that would be near the first down, but you know there is a flag. It's going to be against Noblesville, so it will be coming back. Four thirty-five to go. So that'll push it back half the distance to the goal. Four thirty-six to go. This looks like it very well could be my first overtime game. Twenty-seven, twenty-seven. It's been a wild and woolly game. Big plays by both teams. Each team with four touchdowns and three successful PATs, while while uh, one missed. So now, now in the end zone, he's very, very careful. He gets rid of it, and it is intercepted, and it is going to be returned for the touchdown. Yes, 
Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. That was a. Uh, it's just it should not have thrown that ball. That was just a, a very, very um, big mistake there by Tally. But Avon takes advantage, I believe. I believe that was Ethan Reynolds who came away with it. And. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that was. Uh, Oh my God, that was, and it was just such, such a, uh, you know, it was thrown right to Reynolds, and um, wow, I, I'm I'm overwhelmed, but uh, now Sam Miller, uh, and now the high snap, but she gets, and it's blocked, so Miller all of a sudden, oh that one was, I don't think that one was her fault, it was a high snap, and then they, um, there was some bad coverage, so Miller all of a sudden after hitting her first 20, now missed her last two since I've commentated her, nevertheless, uh, Avon, um, nevertheless, Avon um, still, the, the, Avon does have the lead um, with a 412 to go. They're following that uh, eth that uh, touchdown, um, or that interception return for a touchdown by, by Reynolds. Ethan Reynolds, who is a sophomore. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was thrown right to him at the 12, and, I mean, he ran in pretty easily. So, yeah, that I'm just uh, shaking. My, I guess that was a head-scratching pass there by Tally, who really had played fairly well a lot of this game. But, yeah, that was just a very, you know, it's a surprising pass by his part. But now uh, Westfield, do they get a good return up to about the 36 there. And I, I think probably he got rid of it in a hurry because, you know, he was uh, in danger of the safety. I think that's what happened. Second interception of the game. And um, what Garrett has thrown one as well. So now Westfield uh, uh, trailing by six with 4.07 to go, 65 yards to go. And keep in mind, however, that if they get a touchdown, any conversion will put them in the lead. And now fakes the handoff, throws up the middle, and he's got a, uh, and now he breaks a tackle inside the 45 up to about the 43, so that's a gain of 21 or 22 there by Pining. So they mark it there at the 43, that's a pickup of 22. So uh, Westfield got, got a great start to the drive. They're 43 yards away now, 349 to go. And now Tally, you know, looking to redeem himself from that interception. He lines up with three receivers to the left, uh, peening to the right, following the big reception, five for the running back. Takes the snap, drops back to pass. He's pressured. He gets rid of it. Uh, it's com a complete for a gain of about one or two yards. And it was a reception there by Pfeiffer. That's his first uh, reception of the game. Goes for one yard. So second and nine at the 42 for Westfield with 3.09 to go here. And now. And now they got a uh, first down there by uh, Franzen. The pickup of nine. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. And now uh, Tally turns to the sideline. Now he gets back in formation. And now th th throws deep, and it is incomplete. Oh, it is. Oh, my God. I didn't think he, he got that. That was inc That's an incredible play then. And now all of a sudden, uh, Westfield rushing to formation. Quarterback sneak by Tally. They, they push him. Did he break the plane? Apparently not. No, he did not. Oh, but I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by that reception, though. Yeah. 
And now so second and goal at the one. And now they got the touchdown here. That was that was tally. Second try worked. So now we're tied with two minutes to go and the conversion pending. Oh my God. That's Tally's second uh, touchdown rush of the game. So Beltron with a very crucial extra point. This would be for the lead here with two minutes to go. Kick is low, but they get it. They make a gross, and he misses it. He misses it, and we're tied. We're tied. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! What, what, what a what a thrilling finish that we're having. Oh my God! So we could be going to overtime after all. So, did, did anybody see who made that reception for Westfield? Okay, thank you. So now, uh, Westfield to kick off. We're tied at 33, two minutes to go in the fourth quarter, possibly headed for overtime here. It's fielded out the 14, brought up to the uh, 30, 35, 40. And Mitchell uh, knocked out a bouncer on the 42 or 43. So 152 to go here. And now Avon starting with field, good field position. Um, I believe they still have all three timeouts. So Avon, they, they marked the ball at the 42, 58 yards and 152 to go. That's plenty of time for a team of this offensive magnitude. This game, you know, has the intensity of a varsity game. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Now a handoff, they're right on top of him. He uh, gets forward for two or three. That was Jalen Love. I figured it would be Steven in there, but you know, Love. Uh, he does get three out of it. So now first and uh, uh, second and seven at the 45. 122 to go. Now screen pass. And it was it interesting. Oh, my, it was nearly intercepted. The intended receiver was Mitchell. That does stop the clock there. So it will be third and seven. Avon at least does not have to use a timeout there. I'm surprised they haven't been a little more adventurous so far, though. And I'm surprised Steven isn't in there, but we'll see. Now, now uh, well, Westfield trying to get, you know, the, encourage their fans to make some noise. About 40 Westfield fans across the field in the uh, visiting bleachers. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Now, um... Pass up the middle. It is complete. I think he's going to be a yard short. He might just have the first. It, it, the, the. Wow, is, this is like going to, be, going to be about one inch. Wow, they're, they're, okay, they're marking him just short. That's Stovall's first reception of the game. I'm sorry, that was Gall. Excuse me, Gall. I'm sorry. Now there's some deliberation. Apparently, there's a. That was Gall there, by the way. Now they they might be calling for a measurement. There's a. Uh... Now they're yeah they're marking it yeah fourth down. Much to the uh, anger of the crowd here. And yeah, this is, I think somebody just called for instant replay, which unfortunately we do not have the benefit of here in high school ball. But anyway, uh, with 107 to go in the fourth quarter, Avon and Westfield are tied at 33, each team with uh, five touchdowns, three successful extra points, but two missed extra points. So uh, anyway, they are going to do a measurement after all. So let's see how this works out.
No, he's, uh, I mean, about six inches short. So, a controversial spot here. And will Avon go for it on fourth and inches? I believe they will. 107 to go. So now the Orioles break huddle. Three receivers to the left, Mitchell to the right, Parker in shotgun. Fans making noise. This is about as emotional as I've ever seen a crowd at a JV game. So let's see, I'm not sure what the delay is. So now the referee blows the whistle. Snap. As fake stand off, throws it up the middle. It is caught inside the 40. We got the first down and more. That was Gall there. A gain of about uh, 10 there. So Avon is in business. 105 to go. The clock stops to move the chains. I believe the Orioles still have all three timeouts. So two receivers to the left, one to the right. And now drops back to pass. Throws over to the right side, and it is intercepted. Intercepted. Um, and he brings it up to about the 31 or 32. I, do, I don't, wow, that that's, I'm not sure who he was throwing to if there was miscommunication, but he did not throw it close to any of his receivers. I mean, that was, wow. Uh, um, but nevertheless, um, uh, Westfield will take over, over with 39 seconds at their own 30. Now the question is, will they go for the score or will they just uh, kneel it out and play for overtime? Two uh, interceptions for each quarterback now. Oh, my God. What, what a... What a <laughs> this is... Uh, this is a lot better than the varsity game I called last night. So now they are going for a th throw up the middle, and he's up to about the uh, uh, 49 there. So that's a 19-yard gain there over, over to uh, Peening. 29 seconds left. They go into the hurry up. And now um, drops back to pass. Screen pass over on the right side to Pfeiffer, and he gets out of bounds after a pickup of about four. So good start to the drive for the uh, Shamrocks. They marked that one at the um, and now they give it to, to I don't understand that call at all. They give it to Fife who's brought down at the line of scrimmage and then I believe that yeah they just took a timeout there. I think they have one left now. So uh, third and ten, yeah, I, I have no idea what that run was all about. I think, I think that was just, in my opinion, a bad play call. And, you know, I understand that I'm a, you know, just a commentator. I'm not a former player except for, you know, one year of Little League, and I'm not a former coach. But, you know, I remember watching that Seattle-New England Super Bowl, and I remember when uh, Wilson threw that pass up the middle, and I'm thinking, is it just me or was that just a terrible play call? And then, the commentators <laughs> confirmed a few seconds later that it was a terrible play call. So, okay, it's not just me. You know, um, hopefully, you know, 40, th this is my 41st consecutive season of watching football. Hopefully that's taught me enough that I'm qualified to occasionally make an assessment like that. <laughs> uh, so third and 10 now for the, um, for the um, Shamrocks at their own 49, 18 seconds to go. Tied at 33, likely headed for overtime here. Eleven fifty-one, your time of day. Now fakes the handoff, drops back, throws deep up the middle. He's caught. It's inside the 25, inside the 20. Breaks a tackle up to the 16. They will stop the clock to move the chains. That's going to be a pickup of 35 yards there. A uh, peening again, and I think he's, they're going to spike it immediately. 
And, you know, um, they're waiting to get, they don't even have the chain set, but it, he does spike it immediately, so the clock stops with seven seconds to go. Oh, my God. We are going down to the wire here in Avon. The game tied at 33. Wow. So now, first and ten, or second and ten at the 16, seven seconds to go. I believe Westfield has one timeout left. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Five for the, the running back. Uh, Tally throws into the end zone and is intercepted. Four seconds left. He's got some room down the left side. The, um, he uh, dodges around a couple of, he's knocked out of bounds, and we're going to overtime. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Well, yeah, I've, I've done 76 varsity games, probably 20 to 25 JV and freshman games among all schools, so that's about 100 games overall. Finally, I get to see overtime. And so, uh, man, the, the, both teams have played well, but each team has made three or four uh, bad plays that, you know, they got to be, who, and whoever loses this game is going to be sick knowing that, you know, just one fewer blunder and, you know, they would have won the game, so. It's, a, it's an example of why you got to play good fundamental football. So anyway, um, I am not a fan. I, I mean, I, to me, the best you know uh, overtime system is the sudden death that they have in the NFL. Um, I, I, I sort of like the uh, reform they made to, to their sudden death a couple of years ago, where you know they now, uh, unless the team that gets the ball first gets a touchdown, each team will get at least one possession, but. Uh, Anyway, um, now we got the uh, uh, captains. I guess they're going to do a coin toss there. But, oh, my God, I, I am just overwhelmed um, by how crazy this game has been. And, you know, I, I, I'm, um, you know, I commentated Cascade at Indian Creek last night, and, you know, I'm a passionate Cascade fan. And um, really, uh, Avon, Cascade, and Plainfield are what the three teams that I consider my home teams. Um, and basically, I do, for the most part, and I did Avon Varsity last week, which was a great thrill. I'd been wanting to do that a lot for the last couple of years. But for me, you know, um, typically the last couple of years, I've primarily done uh, Cascade Varsity and then Plainfield and Avon, uh, uh, freshman and JV. Um, but uh, this uh, the, last night's game was pretty depressing. This this one is a thriller, and ho hopefully Avon will pull it out. But we'll see. So now uh, the uh, each t uh, team will uh, get a series starting at at the ten. And the one thing I hate about the, uh, the these overtime systems is the way they inflate scoring so much. But anyway, three receivers to the left from the right. Throws into the end zone, and it is, uh, oh, he almost had it. It was uh, it bobbled and then fell to the ground incomplete. The intended receiver was Mitchell. He probably would have had the touchdown had he made the reception. Would have been very close at, at least. So second down at the 10. We're in overtime number one here. Now, handoff there to uh, Levin. He fumbles, but he gets his own fumble and falls on it at the six. And that had he had he lost the fumble, then that would have been that we would not have been out of it, but we would have been in deep trouble because Noblesville would have uh, uh, won with any score, even a field goal. And their kicker Beltron is good enough to make a field goal from short range. He hit three of his five extra points. So love, good job falling on the ball. I uh, that's a second fumble, but you know he did recover this one, and he was you know that shows a lot of alertness and good reflexes. So now three receivers to the right, one to the left, throw up to, the, and they got the touchdown. That was Mitchell. 
So now, um, so now it's 39-33 with the conversion pending. So Garrett to Mitchell for six. So now um, Avon takes a timeout. So Avon now in um, the uh, top half of the first overtime, leading 39-33 with the conversion pending. That was Mitchell's fourth reception of the game. So now, um, and now it's 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 important that we get this extra point. Sam Miller hit her first three, missed her last two, and yeah, I'm and I'm that is the correct pronoun. Um, we do have um, a girl kicker who's very very good. No, but we're going we're going for two though. That's a surprise. First time that I've ever seen uh, Avon go for a two-point conversion with Sam uh, Miller in the game. So, uh, now throws into the end zone. Did he get it? Yes, yes. Um, it was a direct. It was a quick pass to uh, to Gall. And so now that puts uh, Westfield in a lot of pressure. They have to not only get the touchdown, but they have to get the two. Maybe that was the thinking. You know, just wanting to put them in a high-pressure situation. And there you hear, we will rock you. Um, and speaking of which, uh, well, now we'll we go to uh, hold that thought there. And now a handoff there to Pfeiffer. He takes it around the right side, but he's brought down for a loss of two or three. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be brought down for minus two, minus three. That's not, good, not a good start. He was slow to get up. And now he, 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 he's, he's up on his own power, but he appears to be a little shaken. But now I think he is going to stay in the game. So it'll be second down and goal for the, uh, for, for the Shamrocks there. At the 13, and now, and now, uh, fix, and now it's a fumble, and we win it. We win. We re recover the fumble. Cascade wins in overtime. I mean, Avon wins in overtime. Sorry, but nevertheless, your Orioles uh, in a wild and woolly game with several um, big plays and lead changes. Uh, they they clinch the game on a fumble there. Um, in, in overtime, they win 41-33. Oh my God. Oh my God! What what a spectacular game! What a spectacular finish! So um, the Westfield fans uh, drive home disappointed, but they did, you know, uh, have a thriller here with a um, and it really a heartbreaking weekend last night. They nearly pulled off the upset. They fell by seven to the number three ranked team Orioles, the number three ranked team in the state. Now the JV uh, loses by eight in overtime. So. Um, Definitely, it was a um, heartbreaking way to lose, but, um, you know, uh, it was a great effort. I give Westfield a lot of credit for hanging in there a lot longer than I, I thought they would have, but uh, nevertheless, uh, they fall short here tonight, and great to see that Avon gets the win in thrilling fashion. So, anyway, your final score here uh, to this morning at Avon in overtime, or this afternoon now because it's 12.01, in overtime, uh, Avon 41, Westfield 33. We'll be back with a recap and a look ahead after these words from our sponsors on audiosportsonline.com. McNamara Florist has been Indiana's McNamara Florist has been Indy's hometown florist since 1954, providing home, business, hospital, and funeral home deliveries of outstanding fresh arrangements and plants throughout the greater Indianapolis area, including Avon. McNamara Florist is famous for its unique floral designs for all occasions that help its clients express their emotions through flowers and floral giftware. 
Visit any of McNamara Florist's seven convenient locations for outstanding personal service and floral design or to select the, from the renowned home decor merchandise, including stunning Christmas classics. Also think of McNamara Florist to provide your floral needs for weddings, home parties, or corporate functions. Contact a sales representative from McNamara Florist at 317-579-7900. That's 317-579-7900. 317-579-7900 or visit their website at McNamaraFlorist.com. That's McNamaraFlorist.com. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud supporter of Avon Football Broadcasts. They're conveniently located at 4325. That's, 4320, that's 4325, 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372. That's 317-243-2372. And they're open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at ReynoldsBodyShop.com. That's ReynoldsBodyShop.com. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition. Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of that. Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules and information at redcobrawrestlingacademy.com. That's redcobrawrestlingacademy.com. Well, back here at Avon for a final time this afternoon um, where we just had, you know, one of the best JV football games ever played with your Avon Orioles um, surviving a, a few scares and pulling out a 41-33 overtime victory over the Westfield Shamrocks. It, it's a game in which um, Avon started off red hot with a quick touchdown on the first possession, gave up 20 consecutive points, Followed that with 20 consecutive points of their own, and then the two teams battled back and forth the rest of the way with a combination of spectacular plays and spectacular blunders. Um, with 6.21 to go in the first quarter, Jarrett Steven um, scored on a five-yard touchdown rush, and um, Sam Miller's extra point made it 7-0. However, Westfield struck back on the ensuing drive and scored on a one-yard touchdown rush by quarterback Nick Talley. However, uh, Eduardo Beltran missed the extra point, making the score 7-6 as Avon retained the lead. However, uh, Westfield did get the lead, uh, taking advantage of a Jalen uh, Jalen uh, Love fumble. And with um, 5.47 to go in the second quarter, Jack Pfeiffer rushed it in from five yards. And Beltran this time was good on the extra point, making the score 13-7. And then um, following an interception on a tipped pass, the uh, Shamrocks actually got a two-possession lead there. Um, the, and, um, oh, excuse me, and, and excuse me. Then on the, um, on, Avon's ex in, on the Avon's ensuing possession, there was a bad snap um, that uh, was recovered by Westfield in the end zone for a, a touchdown, and Beltron's extra point made it 20-7. to seven. However, um, then Avon uh, uh, recovered very quickly uh, on the ensuing drive on a 55-yard touchdown pass from Peyton Garrett to Remington Gall, um, and Sam Miller's extra point made it 20-14. to 14. And then it looked like uh, w that Westfield was going to take the lead into the locker room, but an uh, interception in the final minute uh, was converted into a 35-yard uh, touchdown rush by Jarrett Steven, and Miller's extra point put uh, uh, Avon back on top 21-20. Then in... Um, the third quarter, um, Garrett threw a seven-yard touchdown pass to Steven. And uh, this time, Miller was uh, no good on the extra point, making the score 27-20. And with 8.16 to go in the fourth quarter, Tally connected 26 yards to Carson Voorhis, and Beltron's extra point tied it at uh, 27. Then with 4.12 to go, Ethan Reynolds uh, scored a touchdown on an interception return as... Um, as Nick Talley threw a pass when he was in danger of being sacked in the end zone for a safety. However, Miller's extra point was blocked, making the score 33-27. Uh, 
and uh, then um, amazingly, uh, Westfield drove downfield um, and tied it uh, with at 33 on a one-yard touchdown rush from Tally in the final seconds. Um, uh, but uh, the ex extra point was uh, blocked. Uh, the, ex the extra point was, um, well, the, the, excuse me, the extra point hit the left upright and fell to the ground um, no good. And so we went to overtime, and then Avon got the ball first and scored. Uh, they, they survived a, a Jalen Rose fumble. Uh, Jalen Rose uh, fumbled and uh, then uh, recovered himself at the six. And then on the next play, Garrett threw six yards to um, Carmelo Mitchell. Um, and then um, possibly wanting to, you know, force Noblesville, uh, I'm sorry, to, to force West, possibly wanting to force Westfield to, you know, have to not only score but get the two-point conversion. Avon went for the two and made it w w on a pass from Garrett to Remington Gall. And then um, on the second play, of, well, on the first play of Westfield's overtime possession, uh, Jack Pfeiffer was tackled for a two-yard loss. And then on the second play, um, and then on the second play, uh, quarterback Nick Talley w uh, fumbled and it was recovered by Avon. And that ended the game at 41 33. Look at the individual statistics. First of all, for your um, so for, for your um, Avon Orioles, let's see. Um, uh, for your Avon Orioles, quarterback Peyton Garrett completed 13 of 22 passes for 192 yards. Um, two touchdowns and two interceptions. And uh, let's see, his leading receiver was, I'm sorry, three uh, three touchdowns. I forgot, got either one in overtime. So uh, Peyton Garrett completed uh, 13 of 22 passes for three touchdowns, 192 yards, three touchdowns. 13 of t He completed 13 of 22 passes for 192 yards, three touchdowns and two interceptions. Remington Gall had seven receptions for 117 yards, and uh, he also had a touchdown and a two-point conversion reception. Uh, Carmelo Mitchell had um, four receptions for 59 yards and uh, one touchdown. Jarrett Steven had two receptions for 24 yards and a touchdown. On the ground, uh, Steven carried... Uh, 15 times for 70 yards and two touchdowns, while Jalen Love carried eight times for 26 yards. For the uh, Westfield Shamrocks, uh, a whole lot of uh, st statistics to report. For that team, uh, quarterback Nick Talley completed 17 of 30 passes. Um, however, he also um, threw three interceptions. So... Um, Certainly, it was it was a very mixed game for him. Uh, his leading receiver was um, Mason Pining, who had six receptions for 147 yards. Aiden Franson had five for 48. Um, Carson Voorhis had uh, two for 40. Jack Pfeiffer had uh, one for four. H had uh, excuse me, Jack Pfeiffer had two for four. And then uh, let's see. Um, and Sam Baldwin had uh, one for nine, and then Garretson had one for uh, Adam Garretson had one for twenty. On the ground, uh, Jack Pfeiffer had uh, Jack Pfeiffer had um, sixteen rushes for fifty-four yards and a um, and a touchdown. While um, Tally had uh, four, re four uh, had Tally had eight receptions for minus 17 yards, but he did have two touchdowns, both on one-yard rushes. So um, certainly, it was uh, a very exciting up and down game. And I'll tell you, I really thought that Avon was going to win both of these games, um, both the varsity last night and the. Uh, uh, JV today pretty easily 
but I give Westfield all the credit. They, you know, um, won, you know, we won um, only by seven last night and then by eight in overtime today. So clearly this Westfield program, it looks like they are going to be very competitive here in Class 6A. And, you know, you got to give them a lot of credit for that. And, you know, um, it's just been great to see over the last generation the tremendous growth of, you know, um, both Hendricks and Hamilton counties and that as the schools have moved up to higher classes, they've still managed to grow accordingly and still remain very good in um, whatever class they've moved up to. Like, for example, you know, here in the county, we've seen Tri-West. They won a, a state championship at in Class 1A. Then they won a couple of state championships in 2A. Now they won uh, another one in Class 3A. And so hopefully, you know, we'll see um, some of these other area schools do the same thing. And for, you know, Avon, you know, it's obviously they still have things to work on. They did make some fundamental mistakes. They had the, you know, the two interceptions. They had the two fumbles, one of which was lost. Um, they had, you know, um, that Sam Miller's extra point w was blocked and it looked like it looked like some blown coverage. So there are things that they need to work on, but it's a lot more pleasant to work on those things after a, a win than after a loss. And certainly it would be very depressing to you know, um, and, and I'm sure it is for Westfield now that that they've um, lost a game that, that that either team could have won because there were four or five blunders on each side that you know if you took away one of them you know the uh, winner of the game would have been different. So um, overall, it was a B performance by the Orioles. Um, they've given a lot of A performances this year. Uh, maybe they took the game a little too lightly, probably shouldn't have after Westfield uh, nearly got us in varsity last night. But we did show a lot of heart and character and made a lot of big plays when they counted. And so I um, certainly shows just as from all the three freshman games I've, uh, or the two freshman games I called earlier this season that this is going to continue to be a perennial top 10, maybe even a perennial top five program for a long time. And I, I really believe that Avon is going to have a great shot to win their elusive state championship here in the near future after making it to the semi-state two of the last three years. Well, looking ahead, Avon returns to action next Friday night uh, on Senior Day here at Avon as they play the Zionsville Eagles, who enter the game with a record of 3-4. and four. Zionsville is the last remaining Class 5A team here in the Hoosier Crossroads Conference. They have wins uh, over Lebanon, Franklin Central, and Noblesville, and losses to uh, Pike, Westfield, Hamilton Southeastern, and then last night to Brownsburg by an incredible score of 70-52. to 52. Um, And in interestingly, now pr prior to that game, Zionsville did score 56 against, against Lebanon, but they had not scored more than... And then they scored 44 against uh, Franklin Central, but... Um, other than that, I mean, they'd scored 28 or fewer in their other games, so to score 52 against Brownsburg, that, that was a, pretty much an eye... Uh, the, the 52 was eye-popping. Uh, eye and um, so it'll be interesting to see if that causes uh, Brownsburg fans in, any concern about, about their defense. But anyway, I hope you all will get out here for Senior Day. This has been an incredible senior class of, you know, filled with at least three guys who are going to play Division One ball, led by Samson James, who's on his way to Ohio State. Um, I encourage you all to get out to all the games that you can, but especially Senior Day, because, you know, the, these kids, you know, um, you know, most fans are probably only familiar with these, you know, um, players for about two years, you know, like when they're, you know, maybe maybe three. But the fact is these kids have been playing, you know, for Avon in football for about nine or ten years now since they started with youth youth football. And, you think about how many thousands of hours they have poured uh, of just extraordinarily hard work, you know, to, to get to where they are now and to bring the program to where it is now and probably endured a few injuries along the way. So if you can get out here, you know, we, we probably will have some home playoff games, but t next week will be the day that the seniors are honored. So please get out here if you can. Um, and it will be on uh, Audio Sports Online. So if you if you can, pr come out here and listen to the game on your mobile device. Um, but anyway, before we sign off, I just want to say a few words on, on a serious note. You know, um, I, I emphasize all the time that I do politically free broadcasts because even though I'm a very political person, um, I know that people watch sports 
you know, because they love it. And most people, they, they don't want politics shoved in their face uh, during sporting events, so I don't do it. I think that's hurt the NFL very badly. I think it's starting to hurt the NBA as well. Um, when, you know, um, you, you know, I mean, until two years ago, you could, you know, go to a Colts game and not give a thought to the political views of the players or any of the fans, you know. For, for those, you know, three hours, you know, we weren't Democrats or Republicans. We were just, you know, we were Colts. And just like on Friday nights from 7 to 10, you know, we have 165 hours a week we can debate politics from 7 to 10 on Friday nights. We're not Democrats or Republicans. We're just Orioles. And, you know, we've come through a really rough two-week stretch in, in our history in America. And, you know, a lot of people have their own uh, sincere opinions. There are good people on both sides of the debate. But, you know, this week, you know, I've seen so many feelings hurt so many comments made that needed to be made you know people can express a political opinions without being rude or abusive and can respond to disagreements without being rude or abusive and i've you know you know this week i've you know i made a political post um it did not attack anybody it just st- stood to the facts as i see them and, and you know i didn't attack anybody's character um or or anything else um, and yet, you know, I ended up being deleted by a few people on Facebook, including some people who have known, you know, at least one person I've known over 30 years. And, you know, I'm not the type of person to say good riddance because, you know, I, I'm a sensitive human being. You know, I have feelings and, and I, I get hurt, you know, and I, I got hurt by by this. But you know, and I don't apologize for s- expressing my opinions. We all need to express our opinions as long as we do so in a appropriate way and some of the things that were some of the things that were said to me the hateful things that have been said to me and that i've seen you know said to you know um other people this week it's just a reminder you know you know that think before you say something and especially in the social media area in the social media era when people can you know i think most people who know me in person and know me on social media say that i interact with people the same way in both forums but not everybody does there are people they get online and they you know um before they 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 when you can't see the person and you can't see the immediate damage that you're doing by making hurtful and hateful comments a lot of people it loosens their inhibitions and they say things that they would not say in person and so remember this before you hit the send button think about the potential consequences of what you're saying because you know you could be hurt you could be you could be ending a friendship that's lasted for a long time and even if the two of you reconcile later there still can be hurt feelings and i've seen you know i've I've forgiven people who've hurt me but yet my relationship with that person was never quite the same because there were still hurt feelings and there was still broken trust so and the other thing is someone not sharing your views does not mean that he or she is a bad person you know i remember when i was a kid my maternal grandmother who was an avid republican and her best friend who was an avid democrat um they would they 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 i i had a great time watching it they they just bickered at each other about politics all the time and and it was funny to listen to it and after all after it was all over they were still best friends and that's the way it should be and that's the way it can be again so we just need to People need to think before they, they speak, before they open their mouths, before they hit the send button. You know, debate politics vigorously, but be careful about the words you, you use. You know, try to to say things constructively in, in ways that, that don't hurt people. And above all, think about people not as Democrats or Republicans, but as fellow human beings. And if we do that, we'll, we'll treat each other a lot better. Well, there's no, there's no good way to transition out of that. So um, I'll, I'll just say once again, your final score here tonight, uh, or this afternoon, this morning, uh, in overtime, Avon 41, Westfield 33. Um, as always, thank you so much for listening, and I cordially invite you to tune in next six, next Friday. I cordially invite you to tune in again next Friday. Friday at 6.45 p.m. for the pregame show as your third-ranked Avon Orioles challenge the Zionsville Eagles on Avon's Senior Day right here at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium. And then I look forward to uh, joining, you, joining you two weeks from today for the final uh, JV broadcast of the season against, uh, against Noblesville. 
Until we meet again for audiosportsonline.com, this is Lex Zorn reminding you there is a difference only you can make.